Hello, everybody. Welcome to another webinar. Today, we're going to be talking about how to troubleshoot your WordPress site. And this is a topic that I think that I stumbled upon, and it's something that I don't really think about. There's just a mindset that I've had and a mindset that I've created that these are kind of the steps and the processes that I go through every time that I discover that something's broken on a WordPress site. And so these are some of my thoughts as I wrote down. And um, so as we get going, as we as we run through um, some of these things, we're going to talk about different ways and different methodologies to go through and actually fix and um, and get going with WordPress whenever there may be something that's broken on your site or, you know, if there's something that doesn't work right. Here are some of the steps and the processes to work through and uh, we can go ahead and just that's what we're going to do. We're going to dive right in. So the, um, the presentation today, we'll be going through here and we'll go through some slides, just talk through some basic basic troubleshooting techniques, things along those lines. And then I've got some um, development sites that are all lined up and they are ready to go. And they basically will go through and we'll highlight some of the things that are broken and how we can fix them and kind of work through some processes. And then if you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the chat. There is a delay with the, the chat software. So it is delayed up until a few seconds. Seconds. And so um, towards the end, when I get ready to ask for questions, then we'll go ahead and just ask for them. And then I'll ramble on a little bit to fill a little bit of time. My name is Dustin Hartzler, and I am the creator behind yourwebsiteengineer.com. And I spend every week doing a podcast on WordPress, and you can find that at yourwebsiteengineer.com. And I also spend time each week like learning about WordPress, trying to figure out how best to use WordPress. And uh, so I've got a site over there. I've dedicated um, a small portion of my life to learning more about WordPress and becoming a quote unquote expert when it comes to WordPress. And so with that, let's go ahead and get started things that can break. So there are many things that can break within your WordPress site. And so the very first thing is there could be database connection issues. This one um, we'll, we'll discover and see what that looks like when there is a database connection issue. And this can either happen if your host goes down um, or if there's a problem somewhere with your configuration or your setup file, things like that. There's theme conflicts, there's plugin conflicts, and there's the white screen quote unquote of death. And that is one that happens a lot. And it's one that's kind of hard to troubleshoot and kind of hard to get back into when you do have a white screen of death because sometimes you get locked out and you can't even log back in to get fixed with what may be broken or what, you know, something may be going awry or whatnot. So those are some things that can break. There's a whole slew of other things. And as we go through here, you'll probably realize that there are so many things that you've discovered that um, this is the way to fix things, but we really haven't talked about them ever because, or we won't talk about them in this webinar because there's just so many things I couldn't really go through and, and come up with every single thing that could be broken. The good news is more than likely you probably aren't the um, only person that's ever broken your WordPress site in this way with millions and millions of users. And so there are some, I'll share some with you, some troubleshooting techniques for the end of how you can get help from others. So those are some things that can break. So for maximum success on this webinar um, or just in your general troubleshooting process, the, the best thing you can have is FTP access. So you can be able to go in and edit your files directly on the server because we will need the access to do that. And I'll show you um, some of those things. And it will also be very, very helpful to have database access. This is good because there's some of the things that happen that may break your site that you might actually have to go into your database and fix. And I'll show you an example of one of those things as well. And so it's good to have both of those things. It's not a very good idea to start working on a client site if you don't have both of those things with, of course, obviously the WordPress access, you need a WordPress username and password and whatnot. But you also want to make sure that you have FTP versions and database access. So I know, for example, and I'll talk about this a little bit later too, about what not to do. But uh, one of my first WordPress clients um, found me on LinkedIn, said he needed to do this su super simple thing. And I went in and he didn't give me FTP access, so I couldn't really do it the correct way. But I went in through the um, WordPress editor went in and actually um, changed a few lines of code. And it was before I really knew what I was doing and I missed a semicolon or I forgot to close the PHP tags, something like that and completely broke his site. Couldn't get back in and it was a big, huge hassle to get it back up and running. So um, two, two learned lessons there. Never um, 
work in the WP editor. And the other one is make sure you always have access and a backup and easy way to roll back into things. So, and then the, the, um, the other thing for maximum success, and you'll see this today, like everything that I do, and I might have to go onto a, an actual version of WordPress on the web somewhere. But for the most part, I always work on a local version of my software, just because if things happen, you can get them back very easily. You can, you know, undo, you can't always, you know, if something breaks, like the best part is if you're updating your site and then something breaks and it's time for dinner, like you can stop, you can enjoy dinner, then you can come back and troubleshoot. Like that was one of the big issues that I had before. Like I would, I'd be coding right along online make a change, you know, update a plugin, update a WordPress to the newest version and something would break. And then all of a sudden that live version of the site is down and now it's just frantic time. Like, okay, now what can I do to get it back? How can I roll back? Like all of these things just go through your mind and you're, and you're have a lot more calm uh, mindset and you have a lot more time to think through and work through the troubleshooting processes if you are not in an urgent panic to get your site back up and online. So some of the um, troubleshooting basics, it starts with, it doesn't work. Like that's the question that I get a lot. And, and as you may know, if you followed me for a while, I am a happiness engineer at automatic. So I get questions like this every single day. They just, um, users write in and say, my site doesn't work. Well, that's really um, not helpful at all. Like there's a million things that can break. And especially on wordpress.com where we control everything. Like it's not that a plugin is outdated. It's not that a theme was, you know, corrupt. It's not that their hosting is down or anything like that because we control all of those things. And so the thing is when you say it doesn't work, um, uh, pause a second and then take a step back and then really think about it. Okay. What doesn't work? We need to be able to articulate what doesn't work um, immediately. So say that your, my site only displays a white page or I'm getting a weird error message at the top of my, my site or my site CSS isn't loading or, you know, you want to just put into terms what is happening so you can descriptively tell somebody, Hey, this is what's going on with my site. It's kind of like when you go to the mechanic and you don't really have any idea what's going on in your car, but you're like, there's a noise coming from over here and it goes brum, 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 brum. You know, whatever that is, like that's at least giving the, the mechanic mechanic, the right area, the right way to troubleshoot and start that process to go in and see, okay, what may be happening. So think about that when it doesn't work, don't use that blanket statement. It doesn't work. Just try to come up with a, um, a statement that's, that's more descriptive and will really kind of highlight in and say, this is what is actually happening on my site. So that's the first kind of thing to think about. But the first step is once you decide that something's broken, now you just kind of, again, pause. And the best thing to do is just kind of take your time and just think about, it. I know that if your site is down, it's a major deal and you may be losing money because people can't buy things. But in the grand scheme of things, like most hosting companies go down momentarily for a minute or two at a time, you know, throughout the year. So if you're down for just, you know, a couple minutes as you sit back and you think, you close your eyes and you try to imagine, okay, what happens here? And how can I get it back? Like, what did I just do that may have caused this issue? And this can be as, and this is something also that you can describe to somebody. You can say, oh, well, I just updated to the newest version of WordPress and now I can't log in. Or I added this new plugin and when I activated it, my dashboard went blank. Or I tried to add this CSS code and now all of a sudden this, the rest of my styling doesn't work right. Or I just added this new widget and now all of my pages are being displayed real goofy and it's not following the same format as it was before. You know, any of those things, um, are, those are great ways to just kind of talk through and say, okay, this is what just happened. And now that's going to help us to lead us to a solution. So troubleshooting step number one is what did you just do? Just think about, okay, this is the thing that I just did. And that's probably somehow related to what may have been broken. Now, of course, that isn't always the case. Sometimes it's just a pure coincidence that you are updating something on your website and your web server goes down. Like I've had that happen before and it's extremely frustrating and I thought it was me and it really wasn't anything that I did and as I continued to like undo all of my changes for the last 10 minutes to try to get it back it was still giving me the error establishing connection um, issue and later I, I walked away and I came back and everything was working and then I had to redo all of my work that I just thought that I had created the problem so rare coincidences like that do happen but uh, for the most part just think about what did you just just do and that will most likely lead you to the right path or the right area of your site to start troubleshooting. So the next step is deactivate all your plugins. So if it's a plugin issue, that's one of the steps. Like, I guess these troubleshooting steps aren't in the specific order that you should be doing. I mean, if you just updated WordPress and if, 
If you updated WordPress core and now something's broken, it's probably a plugin or a theme conflict. If you just updated your theme or changed some styling on your theme, it's probably something in the theme. You don't have to deactivate your plugins if you were primarily working in your theme. So that's something to think about. But the general consensus is normally deactivate all plugins. And this is a painful point as well because you'll start losing things on your site, like different widgets won't work and different things. But um, as long as the plugin has been written properly, as soon as you reactivate those plugins again, everything will come back to normal. So WordPress has an awesome ability that you can just go, you can um, check the top box and, and highlight all of your plugins and you can say deactivate. And then if you deactivate and the issue is still there, then it's not a plugin issue. And then you can go through and you can turn all your plugins back on. If you deactivate your plugins and the problem is gone, then we know that it was in the plugin somewhere. And then you can go and you can um, turn on plugins one at a time. Um, what I like to do is I like to sometimes just, just deactivate the, the newest one, the one that I was making changes with or something that I might have just updated, make sure that that one's okay. And then if that's the one, you know, once you kind of highlight and figure out which plugin is causing the issues, then another thing you can do is, okay, now let's start pairing these up with other plugins. So maybe we turn all the plugins off and we've got the, um, the one at the top, let's say for example, it's, I don't know, it, one of your plugins actually is, it works standalone on its own, but it doesn't work when they're all activated. Then the process that you would do is you could go in and you can, um, okay, we'll turn the first one on with this, this problem child one. Does that work? Yes. Okay. And then turn it off and then do one at a time and then see if you can find which one it conflicts with. And then that's when you can start working through the problem solving techniques of looking and maybe Googling or trying to figure out like, why does, uh, um, pretty link light and not work with a kismet. Like, I don't know if that's a thing or not, but you could Google that and you could see if there's a, if there's some sort of relationship between those two plugins that the developer knows or doesn't know. And most definitely the best, um, case is if, if nobody has mentioned anything, like bring it up with both developers and they may be able to look into it much, much faster. And then you trying to go through and dig through code. I know that there's been plugins in the past that I've beta tested that they, conflicted with my theme or conflicted with other things. And I just told the, I gave, <laughs> I ended up, I didn't have time to troubleshoot what I needed to. So I basically told the, told the developer that your plugin conflicts with this theme. And then I sent them the theme and said, this is the area and this is how to reduplicate what's going on. And then they were able to fix the bug. And that saved me a lot of time because I didn't know what exactly their code was doing and how it was working and things like that. So deactivating all the plugins, that's going to be probably one of the most um, popular solutions when you go into the WordPress um, repository or into the, the forums when you go over there, because that's what people are going to say. They're going to say, have you done this? Have you done that? So that will be one of the first things to try. Another thing you want to do is you want to change to a default theme. This is a great example for when I was installing the Smart Passive podcast player. This was an, another um, plugin that I tried out of beta and was working out of the beta test mode. And how that one ended up working was I was able to, I added, I added the short code, but then it didn't actually display the widget at all. It didn't display the player at all on my site. I was like, what's going on here? And I looked and I thought it was code, you know, somewhere in my, I thought it was a conflict somewhere. So I started to turn off all the plugins and that didn't fix it. And then I'm like, okay, maybe it's a theme. So I changed to a default theme. I just went to maybe 2012, I think is what I did. So I changed my local install. I changed to 2012. It looked as goofy as heck because like none of my styling was there. Everything was kind of wonky. And, but all of a sudden the player played. So I'm like, okay, it's in the theme somewhere. And so that's when I started narrowing it down and going through the different pieces of code within my theme. And so I ended up just starting with a blank theme or um, I actually created a new template page and I started to kind of work through, okay, I took all the code and I started stripping code out. And then I finally found the, the area of code that was causing the problem. Then I was able to like hone in and try to figure out, okay, what does 2012 have that my theme didn't? And after, you know, it took several days to try to figure out what was going on here. And by the time I figured it out, then it was a simple, you know, a few lines of code I was able to add and then everything started working again magically on my own site. So that was actually very perfect, but I wouldn't have known that it was a theme issue if I hadn't changed to a default theme. And so that's another thing. And a lot of things that a lot of times people will say, well, I'll just keep a default theme installed there on my, in my WordPress site. And so I can ever change to it if need be. Well, 
it's probably not the best because that one's going to need updated at some time. You know, it's just kind of a pain to have extra code laying around that you're not actually using. Like it's not slowing your site down, but you can always go out and download one of the newest default themes. Like it takes, you know, maybe a minute to add a new one. So I make sure that when I have my themes or when I have WordPress sites that are out there, just only keep the main theme that you're using. And then if you ever need to de add that default theme again, just download it again, use it, try to see if it's, it's fixing the problem and then get rid of it when you're done. So that's another troubleshooting step that you can use. Um, another thing that sometimes happens is um, maybe you'll update your site, you'll add new content to a post or page, or maybe you will um, you know, change some stuff in the code for the theme and you'll go to your site, you'll refresh and it doesn't work. And it didn't, no changes have been happening. And this was extremely frustrating for me as I was getting started as Sometimes I, I believe there's certain hosting companies. I know that GoDaddy is one that kind of has some internal caching kind of built in. And there's a few other ones that are out there that don't update their sites immediately after you know you push information to their servers. And so this would be really frustrating for me when I was still learning CSS and I wasn't exactly sure how to, you know, how to use the right class or IDs. And so I was kind of, I was guessing and checking a lot. I was like, oh well that's a class, but I don't know. Is that a period or is that a you know pound sign in front? Like I, I didn't know. And so I was just guessing a lot of things as I was kind of learning. And it would be extremely frustrating as I would I would push the change, I would refresh and nothing happened. I'm like, oh, it wasn't right. So then I would keep changing and changing and changing. And here, lo and behold, like there was some delay in the updating on the server. And I was actually like still looking at like three versions older of, of, of what I was looking at. So one of the troubleshooting taps, techniques is to flush the cache. And you can do this by um, you know emptying the cache on your browser. Sometimes you can try other browsers because other browsers have different caches. And so if you've got Firefox and you've got Chrome and you've got um, Internet Explorer and you've got Safari, you know, start, you know, use your main one for your editing or whatever. And then you can go and you can change to, you know, maybe you change over to Safari to do extra stuff or to check on to extra things. Another thing that you can always do is you can uh, try on another device. This is really good if you have got an iPad handy or laying around. Also, your phone is a good thing to do. Like it might not show exactly because you're on a different layout, but it will usually, especially if your phone, if you turn off the Wi-Fi mode and you go into, um, you know, use your LTE or your 3G connection or whatever that is, then a lot of times that will do a really good job because that's going to pull from a different, you know, it's it's using a different IP address. And so it's loading your site again for the first time and you'll see exactly what is going on right there. So that's something that I kind of found out and kind of stumbled upon. And it's really nice, especially if you're having a problem with your computer or, you know, maybe there's an issue with, with the computer or is it the browser? You know, there's so many variations of what can happen with your website. So using another computer, using another device, you know, that's super handy. If you don't have another device around, like it's, you know, it's pretty simple to like ask your client or um, have a friend, you know, can you look at this and take a screenshot and let me know what it is. So that's another step that you can do and you can take. Um, another thing that you can do, troubleshooting step number five, and you may want to go straight to this if you want to, but if you go straight to this step, then more than likely they're going to say, um, somebody's going to ask, did you try the default theme? Did you deactivate your plugins? But you can head on over to the forums and that's found at wordpress.org slash support. And from there, you can ask your question or you can search the forums. That's probably my favorite thing is searching the forums. And you can search right there from the forums or I even just do a Google search. And from the Google search, then you can go through and from there you can, you know, I always say like, um, WordPress and um, default theme not loading this plugin or, you know, whatever it is, like that's probably not the best example to Google, but say um, smart passive podcast player doesn't load in theme or something along those lines. Like they, that might have been a way that I can troubleshoot, you know, a plugin and see if somebody else has had it. If you use the word WordPress in there, most of the time that will trigger and highlight some of the forum posts towards the top. And you will just want to make sure that you're looking at the, how many years ago that forum post was put out there because some of those, um, some of those forum po posts are actually quite old and there's a lot, a lot of old stuff that maybe doesn't even have, um, it doesn't even exist anymore inside WordPress. You know, um, back in the day in 2.0, when you couldn't add menus, people may be asking questions on how to add new content to their menu. Whereas right now with the version 4.1 we have, we can drag and drop and we can organize menus exactly the way that we want to. So that's a, a thing to think about as well. So head to the forums or Google your question and that may take you to the forums is another good thing. When all else fails, you can go over, over to, and there's the link here for to codex.wordpress.org slash FAQ underscore troubleshooting. And this has a lot of um, really kind of fine tuned little things that may have happened to your website that is, you know, um, 
it, I don't know. There's just a lot of small little things. The page is like a million miles long. There's lots of different things on this page and you can just kind of go through and see, Hey, is this is, and it basically says, this is what's happening and here's how to fix it. So it's really cool. It's got a lot of really nice things on it. So I would definitely check out that. So that's when else fails. And another thing you can do when, when all else fails is just Google it. And, um, a lot of times those things will pop up and they'll come up in the search results. So that's another thing to think about. A couple things that you can do to set yourself up for fa failure. That's what I, I called this slide, but it's basically things that you can, um, that you shouldn't be doing. And they are using the editor in the WordPress dashboard. And this is a no, no. And I'll show you why here in a little bit. We don't want to ever edit core files. We don't want to edit um, plugin files. We don't want to edit theme files. We don't want to, you know, all of those things are big no-nos that we don't want to do because we could set ourselves up for failure when our, our core updates and then we've lost all those changes that we had or the plugin updates and now you've lost everything that you've added to that plugin. And so you want to make sure that you think about that. And then you also want to not be using outdated themes and plugins and core and stuff like that. That's another thing that will kind of set you up for failure because um, I know it is painful to upgrade sometimes. I know the version from, I think it was 3.4 to 3.5 broke a lot of JavaScript things. And if JavaScript wasn't encoded properly and written properly, then there was a lot of issues. And so a lot of people was just like, oh, we'll just stay on 3.4, no extra work. Well, then look at all the features you're missing in that many versions and security holes and things like that. So you want to make sure that you're always using the latest and greatest themes and plugins. And again, sometimes those do come with a cost. You update a plugin and it may break things with other plugins. And um, most of the time though, I would say in the last year when I've updated plugins, I've really had no problems whatsoever. You know, but you never know. There are certain plugins out there that will um, will fire and trigger and break different things. One thing that I wanted to point out and just share with you as well, and this is kind of a tool for those who are 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 attending this video or the the webinar that um, have client sites, and it's a it's a product or a, a it's a service called WP Stream. And how this works is you basically can log in. You can see all of your activity across all of your sites. So this is another kind of a a great way to go in and try to troubleshoot way, what may, might have happened and how to fix things. And so remember back one of the first steps was what did you just do? Well, sometimes you'll have a client email you like, I, I just went to my site and it's broken and it won't work. Well, with WP Stream, you can go in and you can see like right here on this example, this this image here, it says, says that Frankie's password was re, um, requested to be reset. So you can see that. You can see somebody updated a menu. We can see somebody logged out. We can see that a post was updated. We can see probably that plugins were installed and this configuration was changed and shows the timestamp and exactly what time or what happened at what certain time and things like that. So that would be super helpful if you are managing sites for other people. It does a really good job of making sure that everything is, is um, you know what's going on, you know the activity, because then that way you can see exactly what um, what is happening and how you can um, how you can probably remedy and, um, and undo that thing that the, your client or your friend or whoever's site you may be managing just did. So that's something to think about as well. So WP Stream, you can find that at, it's wp-stream.com, I believe. And they have a free plan and a $5 a month plan. So you can check that out and, and take a look there. So a couple examples that we're going to um, just work through now is uh, we're going to work look at uh, changing URL and can't log in. We're going to look at uh, maybe an imported database and a site is completely white. That will be something that's uh, kind of a rare issue. A database connection issue. Um, another thing that we'll talk, take a look at is what it looks like when a plugin is updated um, or a, a plugin has some sort of error. We'll also look at um, the last thing and I'll probably do more if I remember. I may do less if I forget. But then another one that we'll look at is what happens if we edit Edit files directly into the WordPress editor. So with that, let's go ahead and take a break here and let me change what screen I'm showing you. So the first thing that you can see is you can see the error establishing database connection. So this can be one of a couple different things. There's a couple different things that could be um, that could have caused this. And the, the one is that your website went down or your, you, the, yeah, basically your website went down. And one thing that you can do to see if it is a database issue or if your web host is completely down for some reason, if it's completely down, I don't think it would show this, but it's basically saying that PHP is down or MySQL is restarting or something along those lines. The first thing that you can do to see if you're actually kind of pointing in the right direction is you can always go to um, slash readme if you have that readme file still available if it's still part of your um your 
your install. So I went to the slash readme and I can see that it is loading right here. I can see that it's loading HTML. So the web server is up and working and it looks good. It's there. It's ready to go. Um, but uh, so, so there could be a problem with PHP. So that's the first thing that you can look at. Then what I like to do sometimes to see, is it a problem with PHP or is it a database connection issue? The one thing that you can do is, oh, bummers. Let me see how I can do this. I need to share my finder screen so you can see this. Okay, anyhow, anyways, we'll put that over here for now. So what I wanna show you is on a finder screen, what you can do is you can actually take this readme file and you can, um, you can take the readme file and you can rename it to readme.php. And then that's going to be a quick troubleshooting technique to make sure that you don't, if make sure that PHP is working properly. So you can do this pretty easily. You just rename it to use PHP. And then if we go back over to our site and say .php and it loads perfectly fine like it does, then we know for a fact that, okay, it is PHP. PHP is working properly and then it's probably something to do with a database. And so in this case, I actually did a little bit of hack work. I went in and I, um, I actually went in and I changed the password or the username just to kind of show this error, but that's the next thing that we would try to troubleshoot. So once again, remember, if you go to just the, the dev site itself, and you get that error establishing a connection um, message, then that de definitely means that there is a, a problem somewhere and it could be your username, your password, and, or something like that, or it could mean that your, your site is down, your server is down, or something like that. So if we go back in here and we can go into the WP config file, we'll open that up. And for this example, I did put the equal sign in front of the database name. So I knew that that would be the problem so I could find it real easily. And so that's what that looks like. And that's how um, we can get back into our site. So that's probably the, the easiest way to get back in if that's the case. And you want to, um, there's other things that are here in this WP config file, but we won't worry about that too much right now. Another thing, I set up another site that you may get something like this. And the first um, instinct to see this is just like uh, panic. There's nothing for me to do. I can't, I, it's broken. Like, what do I do? Well, the first thing is, like I said, be calm, think about it. And then if we go up and we actually try to read this error, it's like syntax error, unexpected end of file. Okay, I'm not sure what that means, but then it's like in this um, folder. And so we're in troubleshoot.dev. It's in WP dash content slash plugin slash broken link checker. Wait, I have a plugin called broken link checker. Maybe that's the problem. Maybe there is an issue with a broken link, you know, the broken link um, checker. There's something wrong with that one. So the first thing that I might do is I might go back to over to my finder menu and open up the finder and we're in um, troubleshoot two. And so the first thing that you can do, and you can do this via the FTP editor if you like, or you can, you know, if you're doing it locally, you can just do this right here in your browser. But basically what you want to do is maybe the broken link checker. Okay, that's what may be causing the problem. And if you can't log into your site, sometimes these errors will break your site so you can't even log in. And so if you have no idea what may have happened, you know, if a hacker got in and changed code or whatever that is, like, what you can do is you can just rename this file and it will automatically deactivate that plugin. Um, if I go and I take this and then I just put a underline next to it and from there, um, it will it will do its thing and I can refresh and now I can log back in. Now, if I go over to the plugins tab and I go into plugins on the site itself, I'll go to plugins and I'll install new plugins and it says the broken link checker plugin was deactivated due to an error. Plugin file doesn't exist. And so if I wanted to, I could go back into here. Okay, so I knew that's the problem. I was able to fix it by, by doing that. Maybe now I want to delete the plugin and install it again, or you know, you can go in and you can do it a multiple ways. So if I try to activate it again, it's going to, it's, it's going to not even activate because it's got a fatal error. It's because I changed a line of code and I ended it without a, um, I think I took off the last parenthesis or last bracket or something like that. So in order to fix this, what I would do is I would just delete it and then I would try to reinstall it again and see if that fixes the issue. So I could go, I could go into the WordPress repository. I could look for broken link checker and we could see if that would um, fix it. So if we do an install, we can install the plugin and then we can see if it actually fixes it. It activates. Now let's see if, 
if we go to the, the live site itself, we can see that um, it does work, in fact. So that looks good. Everything is working right there. So that's that's a very positive thing as well. And then let's see, what else we what can we do? So another thing that I talked about is we want to make sure that we never edit any code inside of the WordPress editor. So if we go over to the WordPress editor and uh, I'm going to throw some code into the functions.php file because I know that that will break things immediately. Say you're pasting in code from on the web somewhere. You're like, oh, I saw that this this code needs to go right in here. And so we're going to put um, open up some PHP and we'll write some PHP code here. And then we're like, okay, that's perfect. That's exactly the code. It's copied and pasted. It's exactly correct. And then we'll go ahead and we'll just update this file. Now it's like, uh oh, there is a syntax error and um, the functions.php doesn't work. Okay, no problem. Let's see if my site works. Uh oh, the site doesn't work. Let me try to log in real quick. Maybe I can fix it before a lot of people see. And oh no, I can't even log in anymore. It's all broken. Well, maybe login.php will work. Let me see. Let me see. Fingers crossed. Nope, that's broken as well. So once you do something like that, you make a catastrophe like that, you can't get back in. You are logged out and locked out for um, for good until you can re figure out what the problem was and how to get back in. Luckily for me, I know exactly what I did and how to fix it and change it. But basically, this is where you need that FTP access. Um, if you, you need the FTP access so you can get into your site and you can go in and make those changes. And it's best to be to, you know, it's best to modify things, you know, locally on your computer. Uh, I'm going to continue to emphasize and continue to stress that. But um, what I do recommend is, you know, if you have an FTP editor, then you can go in and you can say, oh, this is, we changed the functions.php file. Let's edit that. Let's go to text edit. And we know that we added some PHP code here, which is completely incorrect. And so then if we go in and save that, we can go and refresh and now we can at least get back in. So that's another thing to do and not forget and um, do that in incorrectly. Another thing that uh, I know that I've struggled with and I've run into a number of times is trying to change the URL to your website. Have you ever started with your website and you maybe started with that temporary URL that happened with your WordPress site? So say, um, you know, it's a temporary URL and it's, you know, something, something dot bluehost.com or, you know, tilde, whatever, you know, they give you a temporary URL. And so you have the temporary URL and you have the site URL and everything works fine. And now all you have to do is change it to the live one. And so so if you go and you make one of these changes, um, we'll just call this troubleshoot 22. And then it's going to, I think, you know, sometimes, is it the WordPress URL? So if we change that one and not that one, I always forget which one it is. But one of these, if you, if you save the changes, it will log you out and you have to log back in. And it'll take you into this in infinity type of loop that will continue to ask you to log in and then log out and log in and log out. And it's just a complete pain and you can't really get out of the situation. As it's loading, let me go ahead and open up the local host and we'll get PHP my admin opened up so we can go ahead and see how we can fix this. But that's, I don't know why this is taking so long. Maybe because I'm making a big deal. I'm changing a lot of things. Okay, as we wait for that, um, another thing that I want to share and highlight is this, um, is the tab, the permalinks tab. This is another one that if anything goofy is happening on your site, let's say wp-admin. Um, don't look at my usernames and passwords. They're on a local machine. I would never use something like that for live. But if you're, if you, anything, if you try to go directly to a, a website, uh, maybe you've transferred a website from live to local, or you've moved it somewhere, and then you try to go to different URLs, say, you know, yoursite.com slash um, slash about or something like that, and it just doesn't work, it doesn't load, then you just need to go to this permalinks page. By going to this permalinks page by and doing absolutely nothing. Um, you don't have to like by by just going to this page. All you, all it does is um, it rewrites all of those rewrite rules, and then from there you can go in and you can actually um, 
it's like the magic button that nobody knows about. So you just have to go to this page and say save changes and everything's going to start working again. So um, see session expired, please log in again. We're gonna get to the um, login page. And if we go to login and then it's gonna try to log us into this page and then that's gonna take some while to load and we're never gonna get back in because we made the changes that we did. We changed the WordPress URL without updating the site URL. So that's where the problem lies. So um, what you need to do is go over to your database, go over to the PHP my admin, and then that's troubleshoot number two. And what you need to do is you need to go into the WP options table. And from there you can see, oh, this is WP options three. Whoops. Um, let me try this one. Okay, so then what we need to do is we need to make sure that both of these URLs are the same. And it's easy, easy as clicking on one of these and we can go in and we can say troubleshoot number two. And then if we just hit enter, it's going to update. And then we should be able to log back in. If we refresh here, we should be able to log back in and get back into our site. So that's another thing that you can do. Another piece of troubleshooting magic is going in and doing that. One other thing that I wanna share, and this is something that, um, this has happened to me before as I've been transferring sites before and the site comes through, but you haven't updated. Let's see, we'll, we'll do troubleshooting too since we're still logged into this one. Let's close a few of these windows here. We'll go to troubleshooting two. And if you're um, in this WP options table, if your theme doesn't match the theme that you've that you've moved, or maybe there's no theme file that's called the exact same thing. So maybe this will say, let's say, for example, this says um, 2016. And we'll do, whoops, we'll do 2016 as well. Oh, it's spelled wrong, but at the point. Um, and then we go to our and look at our main site. It will show a complete white page. There'll be nothing there. It's completely white. And that's one of the, the first key things that you can think about. Like, oh, it's completely white. Maybe there's a problem. And it's the theme not matching up. The theme in the database doesn't match up with the actual theme that's in the WordPress repository or in the WordPress themes folder. So to think about that, like if you're moving things over, you've you've duplicated a site, you've taken the database and you've moved it to your new place, but you haven't moved the theme files yet. That's what's going to happen. You also get the error message uh, or a different type of error message if you go through and when you move um, your database but you haven't moved the plugins yet, it'll say all of these plugins are deactivated because they do not exist. So that's another thing to think about. So those are the things that I wanted to share. Those are the, the ideas and, and some of the, the pieces of troubleshooting magic that I wanted to kind of talk through and highlight today. If you have any questions, um, feel free to ask them there in the chat and we'll get to those in just a few minutes as the, as the live video and in the, in the streaming all catch up with each other. But those are some of the things I think about when I, when I troubleshoot, when I get an email from somebody, when somebody said, this is broken, like these are pretty much the steps that I go through. I talk through them, I think through them in my head. And of course I don't like ponder them super long like I used to, but it's just kind of the mythology of going through, taking your time, creating what you need. You know, it's just, there's a lot of things that it takes to, to get everything, you know, working and fixed and, and your site back up and running. So this is to help you not feel fear when it comes to editing your WordPress site. The best news is like, you really can't break things. I mean, you can, but you can always, almost always get things back exactly to how they were um, just a few moments ago. Like, and the best part too is how WordPress keeps the data and your themes and plugins and stuff separate. Your visuals and your your content are separate. That's another really great news that's a, that's awesome because of the fact that um, if you turn off plugins, you turn off themes, like your, your content's still there. You're not gonna lose anything when it comes to content. And you can take that database, you can move the database real quick, you can put it on another place. You can do a lot to lots of different things. So that's what I want. That's why I love WordPress and it makes it so easy to use. So those are some things that I, that I just wanted to highlight some, uh, some pieces that of, you know, a little bit of knowledge that, that it's taken me a few years to try to figure out and, and, and work through and try to figure out what may be happening. Um, another thing that just, this is another kind of a cool little tip, a tribic, um, it's not really troubleshooting in any way, shape or form, but say you have a client that, that gives you all the access you need, but they don't give you your WordPress access. And you're like, oh, I really like WordPress access. Um, cause I need to get in. I need to change some things within WordPress. Well, if they give you access that you can get to PHP, my admin, you can actually create your own user account. 
which is pretty simple. Like it's, I mean, it's a little bit of work, but you can, you can do it fairly easy. So the first thing is you go to WP users. And then what I like to do is I just like to go into, um, usually I just go, go to edit and then I change everything that's in here and then I will save insert as a new row. So for example, like my username, this, this value needs to be two. Uh, my admin username, we'll change this to Dustin. We'll just call that Dustin. Um, we'll say Dustin here. We'll put a different email address because you can't have the same email address. So I'll say D at hartzlerdm.com. This is something different. I'll change this to Dustin. And then you want to put in your password. And so your, your password, actually, this is the trickiest part. Your password needs to go in and it needs to go in a um, MD5 is the, is the function name. And so I don't know why that's what you just do. And so we'll put, um, the password is Dustin. And so it's all Dustin and I go and I'll insert as a new row. And so when I do that, it will go in and it'll say, okay, now we've got admin and now we've got Dustin. Well, now you have to go in, you have to add um, the profile and your user levels. Cause right now that just uses, that adds you as a subscriber. And so you can actually go to WP um, user meta table. And then what you want to go in and you do is you want to, um, you want to add the capabilities and the user level for both of those. So you want to go in and you will say that um, you want to say that you are user ID number two, and then you want to save and insert as a new row. And it's telling me that I can't do that because I can't have the value 10. If I do zero there, it should auto index. And then the other one that we want to do is we want to do this one, which is the user level. And we want to just knock that out. And we're going to say we're user level two. And then we will save and insert as a new row. And we'll go from there. And now I could log in as Dustin or I could log in as admin either way. Lynn asks, can you explain what you did to fix the website URL from within the general settings where you changed the address URL? Where did you go to fix this? Yes, I can explain that. So basically what I did is I went into the WordPress database. I went to the table that this change had been made in. And then I went to the table, right? I went to the database and then I, I went to the table WP underscore options. If it's a newish site, um, your site URL and your home URL will be right towards the top. They've restructured the database a little bit for new installs. If you have an old install, the site URL is still number one, but the home URL is usually on the second page. I don't know why it's just on the second page. And um, so you want to think through that. So you just basically are looking for home URL and site URL, and it'll be the either the, the new one or the old one. And so the best way what I do is I always just change it back to how it was. And then I always go and look up. There's a there's a document on the WordPress repository of saying how you the, the correct way to change the pro or the correct way to change uh, the URL for a site. And so I just kind of follow that because sometimes I'm like, oh, I can do this on my own. I can figure it out. And then most of the time I cannot. So that's in the WP underscore options table. And there's all kinds of stuff in this file. And this, if uh, on your website, engineer.com, it's got hundreds and thousands of, it's got thousands of rows. It's like 8,000 rows because it's got all kinds of stuff is stored in the options table. There's a lot of plugin information that's stored there. There's a lot of settings. Um, there's a lot of things that are stored in here. You can just kind of go through and look. And the option value is probably the one that's going to help out the most and kind of help you understand what the option is. And so, for example, like this one, blog character set, this is just the, the type of character set we're using. Um, I, you can see that active plugins, like it basically has all my active plugins is right in there. It, it says what themes I'm using. Those are the themes and the, the template and the style sheets. So that's in there. You can see, let's see what else. My default role is a subscriber. So if somebody is added to my site, they're added as a subscriber. So I can see that. You can see my thumbnail size. So all the things that you see in the settings, all of those are stored right here in the WP options table. And as we continue to go through and look, we can see some of this other stuff, some of the widgets. Let's see how many pages we have. Oh, we don't have that many because it's a very small site, but I can see iThemes. I can see Live Fire. These are some of the plugins that I've installed on this um, demo site just to have. And so, um, so that's, that's some of the stuff that's there in the WP options table. Um, and then Lynn asked, do you know the, um, the doc name in the WordPress repository so you can look it up? I think I normally search for um, change WordPress URL. And then it's that very top one, the changing the site URL in the WordPress codex. 
So I think this is the one that I follow. Yeah, you can change it right here in the database, how to move sites, how to change prefixes, all of that kind of stuff is all in this document. All right, Michael says, one of the issues I found that a lot of plugins are no longer supported by the plugin author. So if I have any issues, it can be very hard to get solutions. Um, it means that they may not work with WordPress updates and upgrades. What I always do before installing the plugin is check on wordpress.org and see how um, often the support questions were answered. If I see zero of the last 29 um, have been resolved in the last two months, then I stay away and find another plugin with more active support. I wish WordPress would clearly show which plugins are no longer supported by authors. Um, it should be something that you can select when you search for plugins. I agree, Michael. That is a, a great, um, it's, that's, that's, that's perfect advice. Like make sure that you are finding ones that are actively updated, that the developers are, you know, actually responding to questions and things like that. I know that even if it says that it's been updated last week, you know, that doesn't necessarily mean a whole lot. Like when you update it's to say it's, you know, you can have a super old plugin that has only been updated to say, oh, it works with 4.1, but there's still a lot of unanswered questions there. And so that would be, uh, that's a good thing to look at. Thanks, Michael. Uh, Steve says, I had a situation where the content of my website displayed correctly, but when I attempted to log in, it allowed me to log in, but wouldn't display the dashboard or any backend of the WordPress pages. Steve, that's a great question. There's a probably, um, there's, man, trying to think through what may have been happening um, to cause that is um, there could be a lot of things. So one of the things that I would have thought about if the website's displaying correctly, then that's usually some sort of um, some sort of function in the admin section of WordPress. And so that would kind of lead me to thinking that it's a, a backend issue. It's a plugin issue that may have been, um, that may have, you know, not given the correct rights or all types of things. What I would do there, how I would troubleshoot something like that is I would go in and I would actually like with an FTP editor, you can actually do this in the C panel. Um, you can go in, you can rename your folders and whatnot, but I would try to start turning plugins off from there. So, or you can probably do it within WordPress if you can at least, um, I guess if it's not showing any WordPress or dashboard pages, then you can't do it from WordPress. But just go in and start deactivating those plugins one at a time and see what's happening. It's a little bit of a troubleshooting game to try to figure out. The, the, the core thing is you need to try to figure out what's causing it. And then from there, then that's when you can start working through the steps of, okay, it's, it's this specific plugin B. Okay, what is plugin B doing? Maybe let's look at those configurations. Let's turn it off. Let's install it from scratch. Let's delete it. Like Then you can start working through some of those things and try to figure out, okay, this may be what was happening or things along those lines. So that's another thing to think about. If there's any more questions, please feel free to ask. We've got a few more minutes till we get to that hour mark and uh, um, the time is is wrapped up. But um, this was a lot of fun. I know that I'm excited to get back into the game of answering questions via webinars and doing webinar sessions because it helps me to focus on a specific thing to talk through and to really research and learn myself and then to share. And then it's valuable material that you can watch, you know, someday when you get stuck, you know, in, in, in three months when you get locked out of your site and you're like, well, what did Dustin say? It's just, it's there. It's always, um, you know, it's always going to be available. You can find it on Google and you can watch the hangout later. So um, just a few more seconds to, to wait for any more questions and then we're going to wrap up. I'm planning on continuing to do these one every month. And um, if you have any questions or anything that you'd like to learn on an upcoming webinar, please let me know. I'm, I'm always open. I'm all ears. Co head on over to yourwebsiteengineer.com or and use the contact form there. You can email me, Dustin at your website engineer and or Dustin at your website engineer.com. And I'll be happy to answer any questions or add it to a next to the queue of what to talk about in the upcoming months when it comes to webinars. So I think that's going to wrap up this episode in this webinar. Thanks for tuning in with me live or if you're watching it on a replay, thanks for coming and hanging out and, and, and learning through some of the different troubleshooting techniques to make sure that your WordPress site is up and running, running without a hitch. And when there are hitches in which there will be, you can go through and you can make sure that you can go and you can fix what may have happened and get things back restored to the correct and proper order. Order. So with that, I'm going to sign off. Thank you so much for tuning in live and uh, we'll talk again soon. Take care. Bye-bye.